Happy Independence Day and welcome to Recyclist. It's July 7th, 2023. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. And first off, here's your quick financial update of five of the biggest stocks currently within the industry. As of July 6, 2023, the waste management stock is currently trading at $171.36 per share. Chevron Core is currently trading at $152.88 per share. Chenier at $150.52 per share. Vanek Low Carbon Energy currently sits at $121.43 per share, and Vanguard ESG currently trades at $77.62 a share. First up in the news, a $10 million landfill cap project over a decade in the works was recently completed in Wyoming. Teton County Landfill was found to be leaching harmful contaminants into the groundwater, and so began the, quote, Taming the Wild Waste project, which saw more than 10 years of highly coordinated work between local, state, and federal governments to get the final stamp of approval on cleaning up the old landfill and finishing with a brand new cap. A spokesperson for Teton County did say because the landfill is now lined only on the top, reducing contaminant leaks to zero, quote, isn't really an option for us, end quote. However, since the completion of the landfill cap, the level and number of contaminants are expected to hover safely below standards set by the state. And something big currently being cooked up in the recycling community as a University of Wisconsin-Madison professor and a Green Bay company are working together to upscale a new recycling technique that could help keep flexible plastics out of landfills. Inspired by the area's robust packaging industry, UW-Madison chemical and biological engineering professor George Huber, along with others, helped develop a new plastic recycling process called Solvent Targeted Recovery and Precipitation, or STRAP, as it's being referred to. Huber said that many plastics can't be recycled using traditional methods because they're composed of a mixture of several types of plastic, but, quote, what we do with strap is pick a solvent that will selectively dissolve one plastic. We then keep that hot. While it's dissolved, we separate the solvent from the undissolved plastic, and then we cool it down. The plastic precipitates, and then you get the pure plastic back that you can use to reuse your original material or remake your original material, end quote. The project is still in its early stages, but hopes to open a commercial demonstration facility in Green Bay by 2025. And staying with recycling for a couple minutes, Vermont Governor Phil Scott vetoed H-158, a bill that would have overhauled the state's recycling system for beverage containers. The expanded so-called bottle bill would include most beverage containers, including water bottles, which were not included in the original 40-year-old bottle deposit law. In a letter to the legislature explaining his decision, the Republican governor described himself as a longtime advocate of recycling, but he continued, quote, I believe expanding the labor-intensive 1970s-era bottle deposit system would move us backwards, and we should instead focus on investing in and improving zero-sort or blue-bin recycling, end quote. At his weekly press conference several hours before announcing the veto, Scott said he is concerned about the cost of overhauling the so-called bottle bill and called single-stream recycling highly successful. Quote, my feeling is we should double down on that. That's the wave of the future. End quote. And just a reminder, Recyclist is brought to you by Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or call them at 321-223-7500. Now on with the news. 
First reported by Renewable Energy Magazine, Energy Innovations has received orders from Moss Energy Works for the fabrication and delivery of two biogas upgrading units with joint plans for additional units thereafter. The commitment marks a significant milestone for Energy Innovations as a packager of CO2 removal, H2S removal, and associated gas handling systems. Ted Thompson, CEO of Energy Innovations, said, quote, Our team at Energy is excited to partner with Moss Energy Works on this next big step in biogas handling equipment. We look forward to meeting their needs and exceeding their expectations. We continue to be committed to providing innovative solutions and outstanding customer service to all of our clients as we look forward to working with Moss Energy to achieve their goals. Energy Innovations is dedicated to delivering the highest quality products and services to our clients, and we are proud to have received this commitment from Moss. We will continue to work tirelessly to exceed our clients' expectations and deliver innovative solutions that help them succeed. Now moving to Canada for a moment, a new pipeline is set to be built in the Blenheim area to support turning landfill methane into renewable natural gas. Inbridge Gas says it's a first for them having a renewable natural gas project go through the Ontario Energy Board regulatory process and receive approval. The company calls the Waste Connections of Canada Ridge Landfill RNG project a, quote, major milestone on what it refers to as its path to net zero emissions. A spokesman with Enbridge Gas says, quote, leveraging the existing gas system to deliver increased levels of green fuel content, including renewable natural gas, is just one example of the steps we're taking to support the transition to a low carbon future. Work on the pipeline and its related facilities could begin this month with the project fully operational by the end of 2024. And lastly, according to a recent McKinsey survey, 60% or more of respondents cited green hydrogen and biogas as their preferred options to replace natural gas within the industry in the coming years. 62% of buyers cited green hydrogen and 60% of buyers cited biogas as one of their preferred fuels of the future. An interesting thing to note in regards to green hydrogen is that only 20% of buyers expect it to be available at affordable prices and in sufficient volumes within the next three years. Lower carbon natural gas, blue hydrogen, synthetic methane, clean ammonia, and clean methanol were also options for the survey. Overall, 27% of buyers expressed an interest in certified lower carbon natural gas, with 23% citing an interest in blue hydrogen. And that has been your Recyclist News Update for July 7, 2023, brought to you by Diamond Scientific. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and I'll see you back here next week for another episode of Recyclist. Thank you.